delighted to warmly greet all the innovation leaders, investors, and startups who are joining us today for Ethom Venture Partners Industry 5.0 Innovation Day. Just to introduce myself, I'm Madhu Gupta, Managing Partner at Ethom. We are a deep tech revenue scaler based in Singapore and have supported 100 plus B2B global startups so far. As you may know, Ethom is popular for its zero BS revenue scaler program. We conduct this program with the sole purpose of securing enterprise pilots through our go-to-market ecosystem and activities. It gives me immense pleasure to announce that we onboarded 11 Industry 5.0 startups for our zero-based revenue scaler program. These startups are from pre-seed to series A stages, disrupting diverse sectors such as mobility, real estate construction, utility, logistics, orthopedic, and furniture manufacturing. During this program, Atom and startups will be collaborating with various manufacturing leaders and system integrators to unlock pilots. And what could be a better way to initiate this startup enterprise collaboration than hosting an innovation day with corporate leaders? Today, you will watch the pre-recorded video pitches for four minutes and we will take one or two questions. If there are more questions, then please feel free to put them in the chat section and the respective founders will reply soon. I hope you have fun at the event and fall in love with the founder's passion and innovative solutions. I will now ask Pankaj to move the event along. Once again, thanks a lot for joining us today and your support. Thank you. That was a very energetic start from Madhu. Uh, and I'll try my best to not uh, let the energy down. <laughs> so as you may have expected, we also have a very diverse and amazing jury with a lot of experience in the, in, uh, in the investment and corporate innovation. The jury will rate startups on different aspects of, aspects of the business and provide feedback at the end of the session. Now I would request our esteemed jury to introduce themselves. If I may start with Shiva, please Shiva, do a brief uh, 30 seconds intro. Yeah, thank you Pankaj, thank you Madhu for having here. Uh, this is Shiva Kumar Selva Kanapati. You can call me Shiva from Johnson Controls. So three decades into the industry, across various sectors, now focusing on uh, AI, Gen AI, SaaS, IAOT, et cetera, particularly focusing on ecosystem with startups and others. So wishing you all the very best. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks a lot, Shiva. Appreciate your time today. Anjali, please go ahead. Oh, hi. Hi, everyone. Nice to meet you all and glad to be here. Uh, my name is Anjali. I'm part of Godria Capital. We are one of the largest private equity firm uh, in Asia. Uh, majorly investing in uh, healthcare, but we have a focused uh, venture capital arm which invests in innovative solutions. So very glad to be here with you all too. Thanks a lot, Anjali. Appreciate your time. And please go ahead. Good afternoon. My name is Anne Lemon. I'm working for Apollo Tire uh, in uh, the tire manufacturing industry. Uh, I'm in charge of uh, the, the innovation aspects, uh, especially in the diversification arena, new businesses, uh, new developments, uh, with a background in tech as well, in uh, developing or helping the company develop new products uh, at NCS prior to that uh, in the field of IoT, robotics, and uh, AI, especially computer vision and natural language processing. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot, Anne. Appreciate your time. Uh, Shraddha, may I request you to do an intro, please? Hello, everyone. Good afternoon. Good morning. Good evening, wherever you are. This is Shraddha here, yes, Shraddha Mazli. I'm part of uh, Schneider Electric, Schneider Electric Digital Services team. So my I have almost 17 plus years of experience in this domain. So pro predominantly, I have been in uh, IoT, M2M, and all the digitization technologies. Uh, which Schneider is also focusing on. Uh, we are very heavily into digitization and how we can move from a product based to more of a service based uh, approach, which is across. All the best to everybody. Um, keen to hear more innovative ideas around. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks a lot, Shraddha. Uh, Karthik, could you please go next? Hey, uh, very good morning and good afternoon. Uh, well, yes, uh, Karthik, that's my short name, but I have got a very, very long name. And so, um, well, uh, I, I mean, I'm based in Singapore for the past 11 years, I've uh, been with uh, Ericsson, Cisco, I mean, pretty much uh, all my career is around the ICT and uh, uh, AI has been uh, off late, you know, with uh, all of us um, uh, for the past five, six years. So I've been working with uh, a lot of industry players, including Schneider Electric. So 
Schneider with uh, in, in Indonesia. Uh, so uh, you know, be, part of my uh, job used to be on uh, uh, finding out the challenges with uh, enterprises. You know how the AI solutions would uh, fit in. Um, and now I'm uh, also kind of venturing out on my own and uh, kind of trying to fit those needs um, uh, into uh, some so-called, uh, you know, a solution end to end. It's not easy, but I think a lot of startups that have been in a, have been a jury in the previous one as well. Thanks, Madhu, and uh, thanks, Pankaj. Um, so that's that kind of gives us a lot of uh, insight, you know, where the industry is going and where the developer community and uh, the market is really coming from. Uh, so I'm here to kind of look at all the options and all the solutions that are available that we can take to the industry together. Okay. And thanks a lot for this forum, Pankaj, to Fethi and all the best. Thanks. Thanks a lot, Karthik. Appreciate it. Uh, Titli, please go ahead. Hi. Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, uh, thanks, Pankaj and Madhu, for having me here. Uh, so I'm Titli. I'm working with uh, ISG, Information Services Group. Uh, that's a tech advisory firm, and I've been more than uh, 15 years working as a researcher, devising strategies for global capability centers, and I'm also a reviewer. I collaborate with IIT Kharagpur uh, for AI-led transitional projects to review different curated startups, and I'm also uh, one of the panel members for ISG Women in Digital Awards, and uh, I'm um, keen to witness some remarkable solutions over here today. Thank you. I'm sure you, you won't be disappointed, Dilti. Thanks a lot for joining. Ala, please go ahead. Hello, everyone. This is Ala Abul Magd. I have an experience like 16 years in banking from HSBC, at United Bank, Alex Bank, a bank like this, San Paolo, MCIV. I'm currently VP, uh, Vice President for the Digital Transformation at GB Capital, one of the largest non bank financial institutions in Egypt. And I'm very happy to be with you today. Thank you. Thank you, Allah. Appreciate it. Vineet, please. Hey, hi. Hi, everyone. Uh, I also come from a background of technology domain, uh, around 24 years of experience, currently with Panasonic. So we are also uh, working in industrial automation and uh, offering solutions both for B2B and B2C kind of customers. Looking forward to the startup that are presenting today. Thank you. Thanks a lot, Vineet. Appreciate it. Uh, may I request Hari to go next? Yeah. Hi, thanks for uh, inviting me. I'm Hari. I have 18 years experience. I'm working with UPL. Uh, my core expertise into the digital transformations and uh, sales for CRM. Thank you. Thanks a lot, Hari. Really appreciate your time. Uh, again, thanks to all the jury members for being part of this event. And I know that we'll have some really interesting questions from your side. Uh, you would love to listen to these startup pitches and giving feedback uh, to these startups. We will also request you at the end of the session to provide your uh, final take on these solutions and probably talk about one or two startups that uh, stand out from your perspective. Uh, jury members, uh, you will see a scoring sheet uh, that you may have received in your email. Please score startups uh, in that scoring sheet. Now, I think it's time to do a deep dive into the startup presentations. So we'll start with the first presentation, which is Intellectra, which is protecting critical infrastructure and connected vehicle against emerging wireless threats. And give me a moment before I start sharing the screen again. Here we go. Hello, I'm Mihalis, co-founder and CEO of Intellectra Technologies a cybersecurity startup securing our wirelessly interconnected world. Founded in August 2023, Intellectra redefines IoT security. Driven by our 30 plus years of combined experience in wireless communication security, we tackle critical weaknesses in wireless networks and devices. With 13 billion wireless IoT devices projected by 2025, the attack surface in critical infrastructure like smart grids and connected transport systems is growing. Traditional solutions can't keep up, and they fail to tackle the most dangerous wireless threats. IoT attacks are rising, projected to increase by 37%, leading to 10 trillion euros in damages by 2025. This isn't just about data breaches. It's about protecting our privacy, our infrastructure, and our lives. That's where Final Mile comes in. Final Mile is more than a cybersecurity solution. It's a modular framework built using zero trust principles 
to autonomously defend IoT devices against wireless threats. Our embedded algorithms detect and neutralize attacks instantly, covering multiple wireless technologies in real time. We don't just react to threats, we spot them in their tracks. Final Mile comes into three flavors to meet the diverse needs of multiple industries. Our flagship embedded version of Final Mile safeguards critical systems like 5G EV chargers, industrial IoT gateways, and connected vehicles, neutralizing threats before they cause harm. Our value proposition centers around robust protection against emerging threats, enhanced safety and security, financial risk mitigation, and a future-proof innovation and compliance. Final Mile accelerates digital transformation, secures smart cities, and restores trust in connected systems. The IoT security market projected to reach 55 billion euros by 2028. This is driven by growing attack surface and evolving regulations. We aim to capture 38 million euros in market share within the next seven years by focusing on fast-growing sectors like smart manufacturing and connected transport. Intellectors focus on advanced wireless endpoint protection sets us apart. While others target perimeter defenses, Final Mile secures the vulnerable last mile of connectivity. Our adaptable technology and flexible contracts gives us a competitive edge. We are optimizing Final Mile through strategic pilots and preparing for a major algorithmic update. Our participation in top accelerators and key partnerships position us for growth. With our combined experience and expertise and strong support by our partners, we are strategically positioned for further future growth. Thank you for your time and we look forward to work with you in securing our wireless world. Fantastic. That was Michalis from Intellectra. Uh, please, Judy members, please unmute yourself to ask questions. And you may be seeing a poll on your screen. Please respond to that. Yeah. Uh, hi, Michalis. Thank you. Thank you for the presentation. Uh, so just one quick question. So what is your go-to-market model? I, I see Final Mind as a product. You're able to differentiate yourselves. But how are you going to reach to the customer? What segment? Is it large enterprises or SME? Can, can you just talk towards it? Yeah, thank you for the question. <clears throat> Actually, our go-to-market strategy is always optimized. Right now, I mean, we see the biggest opportunity in the smart city sector because we also have some contracts there. And we'll be able to launch some pilots with uh, a couple of operators eventually. So we want to start from there, build our brand image, and then slowly, slowly move to more competitive uh, and demanding industries like the automotive, for example. So this is our go-to master strategy. Thank you. Thank you, Mihalas. Um, next question for uh, Intellectra. Okay, if there are no other questions, we can move on to the next one. Uh, and if you have more questions about Intellectra, please use the chat section. Uh, next one is AC3D, which offers 3D printers for real estate development and construction industry. And here we go. Hi, my name is Max. I'm CEO at AC3D, a developer of vertically integrated 3D printed technologies that makes construction cheaper, greener, and more productive. Traditional construction is the world's largest $40 trillion industry, but as big it is, as big as the problems it creates. The global housing shortage estimated at around 12 million homes annually, driven by following reasons. Lack of productivity in the existing technologies, high construction costs, and global labor shortage in the construction industry. Even bigger is the environmental impact. Traditional construction is the world's number one waste producer and it's also responsible for almost half of global carbon emissions, including 10% coming from the cement production. AC3D is ready to tackle these problems. Just one 3D printer can produce up to 100 homes in a year and reduce the construction cost up to 50%. With our 3D printers, you will have to use just two workers instead of 10 to reach the same productivity. 3D printing also provides a greater sustainability and significant waste reduction. Freedom of architecture, and resilience to disasters which happen more often those days. To achieve those, we have developed a range of next-generation construction 3D printers with following advantages. 
Structural rigidity, which provides highest reliable printing speed and the surface quality. Modular design with adjustable printing area and unlimited lens that allow us to print three-story buildings. Screeds and tangential print head, providing an option to get a flatter surface and traditional look for your home. We are using a cementless gel polymer as net zero material for greener construction. AC3D is the only technology provider that developed a range of 3D printers covering needs from R&D purposes to printing of the large industrial warehouses. Our 3D printers are already available in the United Arab Emirates. Here we help Dubai municipality to print 20 benches for the beautification project of Al Kazan Park. You are more than welcome to visit it in person. Recently, we launched a partnership to print our first on-site villa in Dubai together with Damak Properties, so one of the largest UAE developers. A few more words about our latest traction. Recently, we acquired the first four commercial contracts and expect over $1 million revenue in 2024. A few pilot projects are confirmed in Montana and Nevada, and more than 20 pre-orders for printers and services received globally. We have four patents, and our machines are offering top-notch printed quality. Now we are about to print our first on-site villas in the GCC and United States. AC3D is a team of professionals in global business development, mechatronics, material science, architecture, and structural engineering. We are ready to supply you with the most advanced construction 3D printers on the market, including educational printers, off-site microfactory machines with high production capacity, and off-site models, allowing to print up to 500 square meter buildings. Our printer cost is including A to Z support that needed for successful implementation to business. Aside from 3D printers, we are ready to provide a range of on-demand printing services, including production of concrete parts, infrastructure and beautification items, housing and commercial buildings. Currently, we are raising our second venture round of $1.5 million. Join AC3D today and use your chance to become a part of one of the most impactful projects ever. We are looking forward to changing the construction industry and therefore helping the planet. Thank you. Okay, so that was uh, AC3D. Uh, we have Max on the call. Do you remember us, please? Uh, Max, hi, Shraddha here. I wanted to understand uh, what are the challenges you face with respect to uh, the regulatory and you know legal barriers uh, because you know if you are going into uh, 3D printing for construction purposes, what is it that uh, you know you you're currently facing? What is it that you foresee in different parts of uh, you know the globe? Yeah, hi. Uh, actually, uh, it was challenging a few years ago. Now it's getting better every year uh, because now uh, almost all uh, biggest regulation entities are going into the industry and uh, there is a guidelines uh, to do all the certification processes for equipment, for buildings. Uh, nowadays, it's supported by main uh, international certification entities like ASTMSO already release the standard for construction 3D printing, also UL solutions, uh, and the ICCS. I would say it's like three largest entities who are working in certification field. Uh, another story is uh, national certification on building codes. Uh, most of the countries are here pushing the implementation of technology. So uh, we see already laws and acts uh, in US that supporting construction 3D printers. Same happens in GCC region. It's actually one of the key reasons why we start in UAE as the first place, because here now in UAE, it's actually easier to get a building permit and all the permissions for 3D printed buildings than for traditional building. So technology is widely supported by innovation-oriented governments, and there is a clear process of uh, passing all the tests and uh, getting a permission. Thank you. Hey, uh, I got a question. Can you still hear me? Yeah, sure. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, so, because this construction, so you work with the OEMs and the ISC, uh, like the Caterpillar and others, uh, or what's your go to market? Um, uh, like, like you, who do you work with? 
Uh, well, we're focusing on construction development companies regarding the market. Uh, we're also focusing to work uh, with governments. Uh, so it's a bit different product if we t talk about developers and uh, architects, designers, uh, constru construction companies. It's, of course, a very wide uh, range of uh, applications because it started from low-rise housing and goes up to uh, multi-story housing, infrastructural project, beautification. If you go and uh, to B2G market, uh, there uh, we can participate and aim into affordable housing programs, uh, various disaster relief programs. Also, we work a lot uh, in sustainable construction field as uh, we offer to make uh, a green construction process now as we have uh, implemented geopolymers. We are first in the world to use it. Uh, it's a net zero material. Uh, also, we work a lot on energy, energy efficiency of the buildings as we have a smart wall uh, so 3D printing call of us to uh, get the highest possible energy efficiency of our buildings. And uh, we also cooperate with governments, as I said, uh, regarding disasters as 3D printing, uh, all to restore uh, housing uh, quickly after any kind of uh, natural disasters. Got it. Direct good market. Thank you. Thanks a lot, Max. Thanks a lot, Karthik and Shraddha. If you have any questions, please put yeah. it. I do have a question. How would you position yourselves compared to the other existing solution in that field? Uh, what would be your key differentiator? Uh, thank you, Anne. Uh, well, first of all, uh, as I mentioned, we provide the best printing quality, what is important for buyer of 3D printer or buyer of 3D printed home. So it means that you have a very even beautiful layer surface. It allows us to provide a lot of decorative options and uh, reduce needing additional finishing. So most of the buildings or items can be used without any expense on additional finishing. Uh, also, we have an option to use a special print head with creeds. So you can get a flat surface and uh, do a, apply traditional finishing like plastering. So you can get a traditional look for your building. So this way give you various uh, choices for end product. That's one of the key values. Other key value is a high productivity of machines. So this it makes it very cost efficient for buyer as one big printer can print up to 100 homes in a year. So this allow uh, construction company to return investment in uh, several months if they have a pipeline of projects. And of course, our approach as uh, we work uh, in close cooperation with our customers, uh, we support implementation of technology at every stage. So it's like a to z solution. After we sell the machine, we work out with materials, software solution, we support at every stage of implementation, even sending our team on site to overlook the first printing projects. So basically it's very uh, big value because technology is new and companies that buy the machines, they could easily struggle because of the lack of expertise and experts in the market to do some of these uh, steps by themselves. So this uh, high care support is very valuable. Thank you. Thanks a lot, Max. We'll have to move on to the next presentation. And again, I think there are some questions for Intellectra in the chat. Uh, Mihalis, please respond to them. Uh, please use chat section for more, more questions. Uh, next one is Equa Firm, uh, which offers portable water solution, uh, water analysis technology to detect contamination such as arsenic and PFAS. Here we go. Hi, I'm David Sarvi, co-founder and CEO of Aquafirm. Aquafirm is developing next generation digital technologies to uh, safeguard one of our most precious assets, water. The Wall Street Journal recently reported that nearly half of US tap water contains so-called forever chemicals. These are chemicals that are cancer causing and they're all over the United States with over 70 million Americans uh, potentially affected according to the EPA. In fact, the EPA recently uh, enacted regulations that requires a range of industries to have regular monitoring of these chemicals. It's not just a US problem, it's a global problem. It's in Europe, it's in Asia, it's in many parts of the world. But the key problem, the critical problem, is it's too slow and too expensive to measure these at the moment. It requires a half a million dollar piece of kit and an expensive uh, technician, and it costs between $300 and $500 per sample. Consumers just say it's just too expensive. What's needed is a simple, rapid, affordable test to measure these. And that is what Aquafirm has delivered. We have developed 
delivered the Aquafirm platform, which is a diabetes test for water. It enables simple, rapid, affordable testing. It's cloud connected so that the data is immediately uploaded to the cloud for real time mapping and data analysis. Nothing like this has been possible before. We have a scalable manufacturing process that helps us to manufacture the test strips, which are at the core of this technology. We make these by the thousands now, but that can be scaled up to the hundreds of thousands very, very rapidly. We're already selling these into the research market and into the biosensor market. What differentiates us from other technologies is our affordability and the, the fact that we can do things very rapidly at high throughput. No other technology has the ability to do that. What, uh, as well, what we have is system flexibility, which enables us to develop new tests very rapidly. So we have tests coming for salinity, for E. coli, and we already have tests for heavy metals and a range of uh, uh, antibiotics. Our value proposition is quite simple. We are priced to deliver 50 to 80% cost savings compared with our current, with current lab tests, our competition. And this precision and pricing will disrupt the market. We anticipate that we'll break even within 18 months of PFAS product launch. Our, our go-to-market strategies are both B2B and B2C routes, and that's using both partners and distributors, as well as direct online sales for some of our products. Uh, our, we have very strong traction already with customers, including UK water companies, from including Southern Trent and Southern Water, and a range of universities already using our technology. We have partnership discussions with a range of funders and par partners who are interested in working with, work with us in, in a number of ways. Uh, our target markets will be both solution providers, the beverage in industry, water test labs, and a whole range of others, as well as consumers. And we think that regulatory requirements and consumer concerns will drive demand for this technology. We have other products as well, including Aquaform SaaS software. This is a software which enables infrastructure design and optimization, as well as, uh, and that will be targeting city planners and architects, as well as Poseidon Aqua, which is a lab-based system, which enables much, very high precision, uh, which will be uh, available in a year and a half's time. What makes us so strong is this, the founders and the, the team that we have put together. We have industry seasoned founders with a committed team. And with, together, we are going to develop this technology to address a range of issues. Thank you very much. So that is David from Aquafirm. Uh, Judy members, please ask, uh, please feel free to ask questions to David. Yeah, for, uh, thank you, David, for your presentation. The one question from me, you mentioned traditional testing in a lab is around 300 USD per sample. So what would be the cost of your this uh, testing? Yeah, that's great. So basically, uh, we uh, in the lab, uh, so we, we our first uh, our first uh, and part of our pipeline, our first test in the laboratory would be uh, of the order of a hundred dollars or less than that. Our costs are, are much, much lower than the costs associated with um, conventional laboratory uh, testing, like using what's called LC mass, uh, other types of mass spec uh, methodologies. We can really uh, we can get this we can get the adequate the, the precision that's required at a much, much lower cost. We have very specialized chemistry, which enables us to do that. That's what, that's kind of our secret sauce, as it were, uh, a special uh, special chemistry that that that, uh, uh, that other people have tried, but we have a, a, a unique way of, a unique approach in terms of how we handle our uh, test strips uh, that make it so it works much, much better than what other people have been able to do. So David, we're, we can- Cost is? So, yeah, so this, the cost the cost was a uh, hundred dollars to start with. In this is a, for laboratory testing, but for uh, for the test strips when we have the portable units, that'll be a fraction of that of the order of ten dollars. Mm. So and substantially uh, in, undercutting that. In terms of parameter uh, between traditional versus uh, your testing, how many you we can do under hundred dollar versus three hundred? So with the the hundred dollar testing, we'll be able to. We have a multiplexing arrangement that was a the Poseidon uh, unit that I showed you, uh, that basically will enable you to do, um, uh, well, starting with eight, then then 16, and then 24 different contaminants. So for PFAS, uh, mm -hmm. you're, according to the EPA, you're looking at something of, the, of that order, 24, 25 
different PFAS chemicals that you want to be testing, and we'll be able to do that in you know shortly. Um, our portable units at the moment allow you to test a single a single parameter. So we've started with arsenic. So we've been developing this really for measuring arsenic in very uh, arsenic affected areas of of South Asia, Bangladesh, Pakistan, and some parts of India. Uh, and so there, of course, we're talking about a different different cost structure uh, altogether. But uh, we we've demonstrated it in in those those areas. We've demonstrated both the sensing capabilities and the real time mapping capabilities that um, are so important to this technology. That's what a lot of our customers tell us about. Thank you. There is a question from Titli. Titli, please go ahead. Uh, hi, David. Uh, thank you so much uh, for the presentation. I am just keen on understanding that since you uh, mentioned about the uh, typically, can it be uh, adapted for different geographical resources as well as the geographical uh, locations, as well as the types of water resources? Absolutely. And, it's a great. And sorry, and how will you be sticking to the competitive advantage for your product? So. So great. So basically, in terms of, as I said, we've already demonstrated this in many parts of, of South Asia in, in pilot studies looking at arsenic. Uh, so it is adapted for that. So our cost structure for that is a very different cost structure to PFAS, for example, in the U.S. in terms of that approach. So uh, two different price points that you're able to achieve. Um, and that's due to scalability of our manufacturing process. So in terms of the, the mapping, yes, that's also uh, adaptable to different geographies. So, for example, we're going to be working shortly in Saudi Arabia. And so we're developing, uh, we're, we're gonna be using uh, a, a, the same sensing technology, but with maps specific for, for that region. So the mapping is is specific. It's all about GPS. Uh, it's all using the GPS coordinates of the smartphone. So you use that and that that sets the the, the mapping. So it enables you to, to work in any region in the world. And if you're in a region that doesn't have smartphone, um, Smartphone uh, signal. You it the the, the smartphones uh, collect the data, keep the data, and then once you get to a, a, either Wi-Fi or to a smartphone network, then it uploads. So we're uh, it's very adaptable uh, to work in many many it should be should work in all geographies. Uh, it's, you know that's how it's been designed. Thank you. Thanks a lot, uh, David. There are more questions in the chat. Please take care of them. We'll have to move on to the next presentation, which is N Smart. It offers IoT and AI powered outage management solution for elevated grid intelligence. And here we go. Hi, I'm Kiran Yadala from NSmart. We are on a mission to revolutionize power grid operations using smart sensors and AI. NSmart was founded in 2022 as a venture supported by Nibit Technologies, a global company delivering wireless infrastructure solutions in over 200 countries. Our team, guided by top industry leaders and experts, is driven by a mission to accelerate IoT adoption and grid modernization in the US. Grid outages require the mobilization of linemen, trucks, and supplies. Lack of information significantly impacts utilities, leading to costly restorations and prolonged outages. However, this traditional approach also poses risks, such as safety hazards for the linemen and potential delays in restoration due to manual assessments. Without real-time data, prioritization and dispatching crew is inefficient. Manual assessments and truck rolls delay repairs, extending restoration times, and underscoring the need for digitization. NSmart transforms the restoration process with digitization. Using smart sensors, we provide real-time data on the location of the outages, ensure crew have the right tools before they reach the job, and automate supply tracking to guarantee material availability, and all this integrated into a single dashboard. This allows utilities to make informed decisions and streamline dispatch as well as reduce restoration times. NSmart will transform utility operations with real-time monitoring and alerts. It accelerates storm response with instant damage assessments and enhances wildfire prevention by detecting Holds way to proactively de-energize the lines, minimizing the fire risk. And with remote outage assessments, NSmart cuts down on the truck rolls, and additionally, it also supports proactive maintenance during normal operations with alerts on the pole impacts, boosting asset reliability and safety. NSmart enhances grid reliability and efficiency while reducing operational costs and improving service quality. Our estimates show that in a full-scale deployment, Restoration times can be significantly reduced, and the average interruption duration and frequency can be improved by at least 10% on the grids. 
and smart drives efficient grid operations while ensuring near perfect compliance with tool safety. With a simple monthly investment of $5, it helps avoid significant restoration costs, yielding over 3,000% returns while improving grid reliability metrics. And smart simplifies the fragmented uh, and complex IoT landscape with a straightforward plug and play approach. Combining various aspects of grid operation modernization into one seamless platform, our proprietary edge gateway integrates hardware, connectivity, and data from multiple sensing technologies into a single cloud-based dashboard, just like Amazon's Ring, where different sensors provide a centralized view in one easy-to-use application. We launched an operational deployment with Baltimore Gas and Electric, which is an excellent company and the largest utility in the US. We are simultaneously working on expanding our solution to other utilities. We aim to have three production customers by end of next year. And Smart will evolve by expanding its capabilities via advanced data integration and machine learning models. By com combining environmental and grid data, we will move from reactive to proactive outage prevention while expecting sharper fault detection, automated maintenance, and dynamic response strategies. And Smart will revolutionize utility operations as it evolves, driving greater efficiency and customer satisfaction. Thank you so much. That was Kiran from and Smart. Uh, we have Salim on the call to respond to your questions. Do you remember, please? Go ahead, Anjali. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, so, uh, Salim, for your presentation. Maybe, what are you differentiating factors in terms of traditional building management solution? You who are providing similar solution on utility operations, efficiency enhancement, energy uh, savings, etc. Hi, and thank you for the question. Uh, today, uh, the, the solution that are provided to the utility companies are very fragmented, siloed, uh, no interworking, uh, generally very uh, uh, difficult to interwork with their processes today. What we bring to the market is really a seamless end-to-end -end solution. We provide not only the IoT devices, the, 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 the sensors, we provide also the platform. That platform can enter work with their existing uh, solutions that they have today. Um, our solution is uh, what I would call uh, a, a modular solution where they can start with, let's say, first of all, uh, solution by having sensors on their tools when they dispatch this, uh, this trucks to managing the poles, the pole sway, uh, where the problems is occurring. And then, of course, asset management in their warehouses. So really an end-to-end -end solution uh, that today we are deploying for one of the largest uh, utility company in the United States. Thank you, Salim. There's a question from Shraddha. Shraddha, please. Hi, Salim. Uh, my Hi. question basically is, uh, uh, you know, uh, when, when we see these uh, larger companies like GE, Siemens, Schneider, where we already have, they are, there's already an ADMS system that they have, you know, for monitoring uh, the, the grid site. And when you put, and typically the OMS outage management system is on top of it, uh, you know, that is provided by these companies. So how do you differentiate? Because most of the people would want uh, ADMS and OMS to come from the same OEM. Whereas if you're just giving the top layer, then it, it becomes difficult to get into such, uh, you know. Excellent like, question uh, also. And we have faced that with uh, the different uh, different clients that we have spoken to. And our solution really complements. It does not uh, change the processes that they have to do and the systems that they have to do today. What we bring is really an efficiency that they are missing today, which is, really how do you react in a more efficient way to outages which is one of the biggest problem here in the united states and multi-billion dollars were worth of wasted money time etc and we are just being hit by another 
hurricane today called Helen, uh, which will uh, wreak havoc on the utility company in all that uh, in the southeast and going up north up to uh, the Carolinas. So we're going to see this kind of climate impact more and more and working with the systems that they have to do. We're not asking them to change the system, but we are more aligned to what they are doing. Uh, and I think that's where differentiate us in the market and it uh, becomes really a, a good partnership. Thank you. Thank you, Salim. And again, uh, even more uh, kudos to you uh, for answering these questions at 3.40 a.m. in your time. I think there is a question from Vineet. Uh, Vineet, please. Yeah, thanks, Salim. Uh, just a question uh, in continuation to what was being asked. Um, so with the renewable energy also coming into picture, are you trying to see how the grid gets unstable and do you have some mechanisms to figure the grid instability because of more and more renewable energy coming into the grid? Yes, uh, and we are going to see uh, more and more demand on the energy and more uh, pressure on the energy to be uh, constantly increasing the power uh, supply. And with our poll monitoring, we can uh, monitor the distribution of this uh, electricity within their uh, then their park. And I think that our our uh, uh, solution will allow them to monitor how the distribution network is operating uh, in a very efficient manner and also cost-wise, which we haven't spoken about. It's really uh, a, a very cost-effective solution when we compare it to the losses that they, are, they have experienced. Our solution will also adapt and learn from the historical uh, issues and uh, will predict maintenance, be it, you know, vegetation or uh, pulseways or uh, pole maintenance. So we believe that our solution will add tremendously in their efficiency. Thank you, sure. Salim. I see there are a bunch of other questions in the chat as well. Please respond to them. Uh, again, thanks Thank a lot, uh, everybody, for your questions. The next presentation is from Smart IR, uh, which offers AI solution to analyze driver physiology and behavior to assess driving and health concerns. And here we go. Hello, everyone. Thank you for this opportunity to present DriveSafe, Smart IR's groundbreaking AI-powered driving safety solution. Today, I will share how we are addressing critical road safety challenges with advanced technology, delivering real impact for our partners and clients. The commercial driving sector faces alarming re safety risks. Driver distraction, fatigue, and unsafe habits cause a significant number of accidents. Phone usage increases crash risk by 23 times, and fatigue accounts for 50% of all accidents. These issues result in not only life-threatening consequences, but also immense operational losses. Companies need proactive tools to ensure their driver's safety, reduce risk, and lower cost. DriveSafer's Smart Tires AI-driven solution for real-time monitoring of driver behavior. Our system tracks distractions such as phone use, smoking, fatigue, and seatbelt violations, providing immediate alerts and personalized coaching to prevent accidents before they happen. Our unique standing point that DriveSafe offers through real-time vital signs monitoring and biometric identification and the ability to identify risky driving conditions ahead of time, possibly as early as two hours. This ensures compliance, accountability, and actionable data to improve both safety and operational efficiency. Additionally, DriveSafe's seamless integration makes it adaptable for diverse industries, from logistics to passenger transport. DriveSafe delivers tangible value by reducing accidents by up to 20%, cutting insurance costs by up to 15%, and enhancing operational efficiency by 30%. It offers tailored service packages, from basic monitoring to premium options like GPS tracking and harsh braking detection, ensuring scalable safety sol solutions for companies of all sizes. By leveraging our advanced AI capabilities, companies can drastically minimize risks and streamline safety operations, empowering them to focus on growth without compromising on safety. DriveSafe is already making a significant impact in various sectors. For example, TransFS, 
a logistics company, implemented our solution and achieved a 30% reduction in driver-related incidents. Similarly, our collaboration with TOGG, an EV manufacturer, demonstrates how drive safe seamlessly enhances driver well-being in innovative mobility solutions. These use cases underline our technology's versatility and effectiveness in improving safety and operational outcomes for businesses. Smart AI stands out in the competitive landscape by offering advanced AI-driven driver assistance with a key differentiator in early drowsiness detection. Compared to rivals like Nauta and Mobileye, Smart AI provides highly customizable solutions targeting diverse sectors, including logistics and smart cities. With superior flexibility and a focus on safety and innovation, Smart AI is positioned as a leader in driving assistant technology. At Smart AI, we are transforming road safety with AI, led by CEO Ganesh Bashol, and expert in AI, AI transportation. Bora ensures drive safety stays user-friendly, while owner drives awareness and adoption. Our diverse team is committed to innovation and delivering top-tier solutions for safer driving. In conclusion, DriveSafe is more than just a driver monitoring tool. It's a transformative safety solution that empowers companies to reduce risk, cut costs, and enhance operational performance. Let's make driving smarter, safer, and more efficient. Thank you very much. We have uh, Gonek to respond to your questions. Yes, Karthik, please go ahead. Yeah, um, I see uh, this is more on the uh, <clears throat> driving management, but uh, also that means that it must be used with uh, fleet management systems. So, uh, uh, so that I would like to kind of understand there, you know, how this OEMs play a role here. And secondly, um, uh, you know, what sort of uh, sensor that is i see ir but i don't exactly mean you know what that means saying it's in infrared or it's based on the camera that'll be helpful thank you very much for this question uh first of all uh, with our go to market strategy we first target the after sales market with logistics and transportation companies but not only limited with that we already engage with several oems uh, so yes, it is uh, as the beginning, from the beginning, it starts as a fleet management, just because we are targeting the liability owner who will be paying for the product actually. Then we are building a relationship with OEMs on top of that with a clear value proposition for fleet managers, operation managers, and we are presenting this value for the OEMs as well. So we do present a win-win-win case for all partners in the ecosystem. And as a second, the accuracy uh, for the drowsiness, uh, the, 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 uh, the top level accuracy needed is on drowsiness just because this is the issue. And uh, according to studies uh, literature, um, the human accuracy is up to 68%, 68 so, uh, and the, the current GSR2 regulation is asking for 40%, 40% of accuracy. And the, the uh, initial tests, uh, not coming from the lab, but from the field, we have a better accuracy than 70% for the, the early detection of drowsiness. And the object rules are even better, like more than 95%, I would say. Uh, thanks for the presentation. So who would you uh, compete against? I understand you have partnership with OEMs, et cetera, but if, uh, do you have any, uh, can you show some light on who are your competitors and how we are positioned against them? Uh, thank you very much for this question. Uh, we, uh, we had reflected on our competition landscape, but to elaborate a bit more, we are... Uh, not only uh, competing with the fleet management solutions, but we are competing with already uh, big giants in the market like uh, SmartEye, Mobileye, Nato, CPA. Those are uh, the uh, uh, top tier five, say, uh, brands operating in the driver monitoring system. But again, the, uh, the, the key differentiation is they are delivering the 
alt comes to the driver uh, who is driving and uh, actually having insights about what's going on with him or her, but we are delivering these insights to the liability owner, who is the fleet manager. So we are combine, uh, combining two aspects together with having the risk to mitigate it. Thank you. Welcome. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks a lot, Gonek. Uh, we will have to move on to the next presentation, which is FITASI. FITASI is leveraging AI and 3D printing to deliver bespoke shoe designing and shopping experience. And here we go. Hello. We are FITASI, and we empower consumers to purchase custom footwear easily, digitally, and affordably. Almost all of us have different size foot, but we have to wear same and standard size shoes for both feet. While some of us may be okay with this, 20% of us are excluded from the shoe sizing system today, especially with a growing geriatric population, more and more people are going to need custom shoes. Who will provide comfortable shoes for these outliers? The answer is not many, because custom footwears, they are expensive, slow, and inaccessible. So we asked ourselves, why is that the case? And we found that for shoemakers, gathering accurate foot data is a key problem. There's a clear trade-off between accuracy and cost. If you want a pair of custom shoes, you will need to make an appointment, visit the shoe shop, have your feet measured either by a machine or manually, which is time-consuming, labor-intensive, and expensive. As a team of research scientists and engineers, we are here to break that trade-off. That's why we develop our scanning solution where our smartphones can help us capture accurate foot data so that shoemakers can accelerate their production speed by more than 10 times. How it works is that you use our app to scan your feet and our algorithm will build a 3D model of your foot. Then based on the specific needs you have, We'll make a customized 3D printed shoe last to share it with our partner shoemakers to make the shoes for you. With our solution, shoemakers can solely focus on making shoes as we would automate the process of measurement, design, and last making. Our mission is to connect consumers and businesses worldwide. Consumers can get easy access to personalized footwear while we help shoemakers accelerate production, save costs, and break the geographic barrier. So far, we are partnering with the Department of Veterans Affairs and have onboarded five shoemakers on our platform. As we continue to innovate, we plan to enter the sports market to help athletes take their performance to the next level before going to the general footwear market. We see a future where your shoes are made only for your feet and we are ready to lead the charge. With 7 billion smartphones and advancement in AI, we're ready to enter a new era of mass customization. Our team is comprised of PhDs from MIT and University of Wisconsin, and we have 70 plus peer review papers, 15 plus patents, and three engineering awards in the automotive industry. Thank you, and if you're interested to learn more about us, please feel free to connect. We have Justin on the call to respond to Juri's questions. Hi, Justin. Thank you. Very refreshing uh, thought uh, and a good idea, too. Uh, have you looked at uh, uh, your uh, commercial strategy, how it's going to really break even based upon what the market size is? Yeah, the market size is growing pretty rapidly. Um, so currently, we've been working with um, not just shoemakers, not just healthcare providers, but clinics, like specific clinics as well. So we're growing both from institutional standpoints uh, through like the Veterans Affairs, for example, and through individual clinics and through she uh, shoemakers as well. Um, what we've gained in knowledge so far is that, especially if you look at certain conditions, because we're after the medical footwear industry specifically in the first place, uh, before we get into other <clears throat> mass markets as well, but for the medical footwear, uh, diabetics, like for example, they have certain conditions like uh, uh, ulcers on their foot. Uh, each ulcer is about 20K in cost in the US currently to deal with. These are preventable solutions with well-fitting shoes. 
And from the clinics we're currently working with, the rate we found for the number of diabetic patients getting these shoes who need them is under 10%. And that's because of supply chain issues, because of the fragmented options that customers can typically get, especially because they're time consuming and expensive. So the market is growing massively in this specific area, especially diabetics, especially in the US, sadly, um, and worldwide as well. Thank you. Yeah. I think you're muted, Pekash. Apologies. <laughs> if there are no other questions for Fidelsi, then I would request uh, to move on to the next presentation. And if you have more questions, please take them in the chat section. Next one Thank is you. my way, which is delivering machine intelligence for advanced manufacturing. And here we go. Hi, everyone. This is Ricardo Castagno, a younger business developer of MyWay, the European startup born to prevent cost in industrial applications via artificial intelligence. Imagine that in your manufacturing company, a machine unexpectedly breaks down. You need to order the replacement component, facing delivering delays, and coordinate with your maintenance team. This results in a loss of hundreds of thousands of dollars in production and so revenue. Or imagine waking up tomorrow morning discovering that your company has to pay a penalty fee because a batch of production that should have not passed arrived to your client. And the need to be more sustainable today has to come first from the industry adopting, looking for solutions to decrease its carbon footprint. And believe it or not, a stupid AI turning on and off your machines when necessary can reduce the overall energy consumption by 15 to 20%. These scenarios today can be avoided. Your processes and your activities must be made more efficient. That's why MyWay has developed an IoT management platform that integrates artificial intelligence and Internet of Things together. We harness the power of IoT data from sensor, from machinery key with OPCY servers, or directly from existing third-party softwares. We analyze and get value from all this data by training multimodal, edge, or generative algorithms to learn on how to prevent, predict anomalies, defects, or production stoppages. Our solution focuses on industrial, medical, Enertech, as well as transport and logistics applications, enabling technical services such as predict and maintenance, quality and control, process control, to even non-technical services to enable equipment as a service business model. The solution combines various technologies to provide users with a comprehensive infrastructure without the need for programming skills, simplifying everyone's job. We use cloud technology for the no-code configuration of the platform, edge computing for real-time AI management, and blockchain to certify any activity on a time base, ensuring compliance with regulation. This internationally patented solution includes over 50 ready-to-use models, continuously enriched by our AI engineer and third-party developers. Any type or source of data can be valorized and exploited by multimodal and multivariant AI, delivering the best information to the end user. And when data is not available, we use custom built AI, generative AI, to augment your data. Once the problem is identified, we deliver the AI model using our platform to enable future scalable models and services. Today we are a healthy company, bragging about a beautiful location in Sess Levante between Cinque Terre and Portofino, growing by the year with a three million yearly dollars to turnover, present in Europe and in the US. The startup is as good as our seasoned founders, Fabrizio and Walter, who are bringing to the table decades of expertise in the industry 4.0 with several successful previous exits. We are a team of 40 people making AI a real game changer to industry 4.0 companies that are looking for efficiency and savings.
Thank you for your attention. Okay, questions for Ricardo? I can go. Yeah, please go ahead, Karthik. Oh, uh, well, actually, it's very familiar territory. Um, <clears throat> IoT devices, they're like, uh, you know, a lot of them, really a lot, and a lot of technologies behind them. Um, so how do you connect or how do you basically they get the data from all of them? It's, uh, it's quite, a, quite a complicated task. Yeah, thank you for your question. So basically what we developed in our platform is a module that manages sensors equipment. When we're talking about, uh, let's say, virgin machines, so very old machines without any sort of sensors or any electronics so far, we can install uh, sensors that can use any type of adapter as we can upload inside the platform any adapter that is provided by the producer, so the sensor producer. And as well, we have a partner that has, let's say, a virtual indefinite list of adapters that we uh, can use. When there's no adapter available, we can make it, basically. But because if we're talking about the new machines that has the so-called OPC UA server, which is a communication protocol that has been developed in the last 20 years and then now has defined the semantic uh, twin the information model in XML schemas. For example, when talking about robotic arms, we do not need to sensorize it. We connect ourselves by importing the XML schema from the robotic arm, and we have the data stream inside the platform. And that's where then we build the entire AI pipeline to get the value from all the data that is provided by the OPC server and provide, for example, a predictive maintenance AI for the use case. Thank you. Let's take the next question from Vineet. Vineet, please. So for a new asset, if you want to predict, um, what are the typical data size that you will be looking for to train your models? I mean, I thank you for your question. So it depends, of course, from the mach from machinery to machinery. We, for example, have um, developed an algorithm for predicting maintenance in robotic arms for Mitsubishi Electric. And in that case, what we needed was to have the torque, which is the, um, let's say, force applied to the engines of the, of the robotic arm, as well the temperature, which is a late, uh, um, let's say, measure. Uh, that identifies the usage of the robotic arm and as well the strength that, that is applied from the uh, the gripper. Then we have uh, as well other use cases uh, in the prediction of anomalies in the welding procedures. And that's where we're using vibrational analysis from power usage, energy, voltage, and ampere consumption, as well with ther combined with uh, thermal cameras and ultrasounds. So we provide multi-model analysis video, audio, images, so any type of source of data, and as well, multivariant. So we correlate different source of data together, find the correlation, and get the algorithm to detect the anomalies. Okay, thank you. Thanks a lot, Ricardo. Thank I you. would request to take more questions in the Zoom chat. Uh, the next presentation is Upform 3D, which provides CPQ solution with web-based 3D product visualization for home furnishing sector. And here we go. My name is Peter Monar. I'm co-founder of Upform 3D. We provide cutting edge 3D software solutions designed to revolutionize the furniture and housing manufacturing sectors. Selling complex products like a prefab house is not easy for manufacturers. Managing customization options can be complex and time consuming, requiring detailed tracking and coordination. Also, exchanging 3D data from product configurators and CAD programs is difficult because the system don't always work well together, which leads to mistakes and slow down production. Our team is on a mission. At Upform, we're not just building cutting-edge 3D technology. We're on a mission to change the way furniture and housing manufacturing is done. Upform 3D solution is unique because it seamlessly integrates AI and 3D technology to create a comprehensive manufacturing platform leading to significant improvements in production speed, cost efficiency, and material waste in reduction. With our solution, we hit two birds in one stone. We accelerate the sales cycle by providing real-time 3D visualization of custom products, which automatic pricing updates as configuration change. 
and streamlining production by providing analytics and insights on customer preferences, trends, and sales performance, enabling manufacturers to make data-driven decisions about product offerings and inventory. The benefits are lead generation, increasing efficiency, and faster sales cycle. The platform includes AI-driven features such as demand forecasting and supply chain tracking, which are uncommon in typical CPQ solutions. Upform 3D provides statistics, analytics, and insight on customer preferences, trends, and sales performance, enabling manufacturers to make data-driven decisions about product offerings and inventory. This feature optimizes stock levels, reduces lead times, and cuts down costs related to supply chain inefficiencies. Upform 3D provides real-time 3D visualization of custom products with automatically pricing updates as configuration change. Upform 3D includes AI-driven inventory management that tracks materials in real time and predicts demand based on customer orders. This ensures manufacturers always have the right materials on hand, preventing stock shortages and overproduction. This feature links 3D product configuration with real-time data from manufacturing, logistics, and inventory systems. Customers can instantly view estimated production and shipping times during the configuration process, ensuring faster and more accurate order fulfillment. Upfront 3D excels in handling complex, highly customizable products. The platform always allows the platform allows customers to configure products with multiple variables, dimension, materials, accessories, while ensuring that the configuration is feasible for production. Unlike many competitors, Upform 3D allows real-time integration with CAD and CAM systems, automatically generating production-ready files from customer configurations. How are we different? Upform 3D stand out in several key ways for competition in the market, such as manufacturability and real-time tracking, seamless ERP and CAD integration, AI supply chain and demand forecasting, modular expandable, multi-user editing, at least but not last, no specialized skill, or coding knowledge are required to use. What our clients say? Our clients have reported 40% increase in production, operational cost dropped by 25%, sales increased by 50%, clients see a 30% reduction in material waste. At Upform 3D, we believe that technology has the power to transform industries. Our platform is designed not only to simplify complex manufacturing processes, but also to drive measurable value. Join us in our mission to redefine what's possible in the world of manufacturing. Let's build smarter, faster, and greener together. Hey, let's take questions for Peter of Form 3D. Do you remember us? Please go ahead. You may be seeing a poll as well on your screen. Please respond to that. Uh, thanks. Uh, good that you wrapped up with the message going greener as well. So I think uh, uh, from a CPQ perspective, I understand 3D modeling, etc. Uh, who would be your target customers? Is it the furniture manufacturers or the dealers or you want both? Uh, how are you targeting? Yeah. Thank you for your question. The main target is manufacturers because we realize that they're struggling with these problems. Actually, the problem is... Uh, not we actually started developing something and sell something. I had several connections in the furniture industry because I'm on that and they asked me that these are struggling with daily. So that's why we came up with solution. And the, the secondary target is the housing manufacturers, prefab house manufacturers. Okay. Thank you, Shiva. Thank you. Do we have any other question for Peter? Okay, um, again, please uh, use chat section to ask more questions. And I see that there were a bunch of questions for Ricardo earlier. Uh, so that's a good use of Zoom chat. Okay, moving on to the next presentation, which is Q Plus. They offer smart solar energy and microwave magnetic powered furnitures on which you can sit and relax. And here we go. Hello. I'm Mariam, founder and CTO of Q Plus Company. Our mission is to provide solutions for smart city challenges by developing clean and smart energy solutions for urban furniture. By 2050, 68% of global population will live in cities, but many cities are still lack of the smart infrastructure needed. We are facing some problem in this field. 
by dependence on traditional energy sources in cities and traditional furniture are without any facilities for users. Cities have weak digital connectivity and inadequate access to charging stations. Create a smart infrastructure, have high cost for urban management. We provide some solution for a smart urban furniture by reducing dependence on traditional energy sources in the cities, creating a smart hub without relying on urban infrastructure. We provide advanced performance and unique design. We create income and, and cost savings for urban management. Our technology is generate with uninterrupted uh, clean energy for urban furniture by three methods, solar system, kinetic system, and microwave magnetic system. Our technology, our innovation is microwave magnetic system can generate clean energy without dependence on sunlight. Its patent is on pending. This page shows our product with detail. It can provide an electric clean energy by three methods and it provides some facilities for users by USB charging, wireless charging, internet, lighting at night, and etc. Total available market for a smart urban furniture by the next five years is 2.6 billion euros, and Cube Plus is going to reach to the 10 million euros by next five years. Our ideal customers are the places, the, 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 the places with the high traffic of users, such as hospitals, universities, municipalities, shopping centers, airports, and prominent brands with the advertising purpose. Because our product brings some benefits for them by energy efficiency, reduce the cost, create income, and audience attraction. We are completely different in this market with the other competitors by create energy for three methods, not only one method. It means without any dependence on sunlight, Therefore, we can use our product for indoor and outdoor together. Our business model based in B2B. We have multiple revenue streams by product sales, product rent, product sales plus, and technology license sales. We have achieved significant traction. For instance, we have been selected as a 100 startup for Nordic PropTech. We won gold medals in the exhibition of inventors in Switzerland, and we won some certificate and other medals in the different competition in the world. We have been supported by some organization and accelerator in the world, such as Business Finland, Auto University, Commercialization Reactor, and etc. We have practical team and cohesive team. Majid and I, both of us, are founder. I work as a CTO, and Majid works as a CEO. With the high experience in the field of new energy and urban furniture design, we have different advisors with the different expertise, such as marketing, business development, finance and funding, and clean energy. We are looking for an investor to lead our pre-seed round. We have raised $100K so far and looking for $250K. Thank you for your attention and listening to me. Okay, questions for Mariam? Yeah, Maria, great presentation about the here. Uh, where do you stand in terms of the product design, of uh, the product development? Uh, hello, thanks for your question about uh, product design. Uh, uh, we we are uh, working in the field of uh, smart urban furniture, but uh, we have, we have designed our product and also technology together. But, but you have a uh, you, you have it already. Uh... Uh, with, with clients uh, uh, running it as, as we speak. Yes, yes, yes. It, it depends on our clients. We can change our design also. So okay. yes, there are some implementations going on, uh, Walter, if that was your question. Yes, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I'll, yeah. We'll have to hear more. Uh, okay. I'll just okay. Okay. Um, just, just a feedback, Mariam. Thank you. Uh, I, I think Definitely seems to be interesting, but I, I'll need to uh, look at maybe offline the slides to understand a bit more, and then I can comment on it. Thanks for the presentation. Okay. Okay. No problem. Thank you, no problem. Shiva. Appreciate that. And obviously, any help would be highly appreciated. Um, okay. You may be seeing poll as well on your screen. Please respond to that. Uh, next presentation is Mehravan. Uh, which offers customized orthopedic wearables for enhanced recovery and mobility. And here we go. Hello and welcome. I'm Dr. Aziz Argoni, founder and CEO of Mehrovi. 
At Merhavin, we provide personalized patient-specific medical solutions and devices. Today, I'm excited to share how our advanced technology is improving care quality and patient outcomes. Healthcare faces a persistent challenge. Every patient is unique, yet most medical devices are mass-produced. This lack of personalization can result in poorly fitting implants and extended recovery times. What's needed are solutions that adopt individual medical needs. At Mehravin, we address these through our three core brands. Z-Bone for custom surgical solutions and implants, Z-Band for rehabilitation devices, and Z-Lab for consulting and training. We offer a complete end-to-end -end approach from design to production, ensuring tailored solutions for healthcare providers and patients alike. Z-Bone delivers custom implants for orthopedic and craniomaxillofacial surgeries. Our implants feature microarchitected structures that mimic bone properties, improving also induction and also integration. With digital planning and surgical guides, we enhance surgical accuracy and reduce operating time, leading to faster recovery and better outcomes for patients. Our process starts by collecting patient imaging data then modeling and designing custom devices. After precision 3D printing, the devices are functionalized and prepared for surgery. This end-to-end -end approach guarantees precision and patient-specific care. Z-Band provides rehabilitation aids like Espelin's prosthetics and insoles for both humans and animals. Made from lightweight, waterproof materials, Z-Band devices offer comfort and faster wound healing. Using 3D scanning and digital modeling, we create precise custom fits for each patient, streamlining production and improving the recovery experience. Zlab offers consulting, training, and technology integration for healthcare providers. We equip hospitals and clinics with the tools needed to adopt patient-specific treatments, ensuring seamless integration of our software and hardware solutions into existing infrastructures. For healthcare providers, our solutions mean more accurate surgeries, better patient outcomes, and fewer complications. For patients, we offer greater comfort, faster recovery, and improved aesthetics. Institutions partnering with Mehravin gain access to advanced technologies that give them a competitive edge. What sets us apart is our technology. From 3D printing and AI to microarchitected implant designs, our solutions are engineered for precision and durability. With surface functionalization, our implants bond with bone faster and more securely. Our material science expertise and patents under review showcase our leadership in personalized healthcare. Mehravin stands out by providing a holistic approach covering both surgical and rehabilitation needs across human and veterinary healthcare. We handle everything from design to manufacturing, ensuring quality at every stage. Behind Mehravin is a dedicated team led by myself along with industry experts like Fatima Zarei, Helia Banakar, and Arya Adamkhir, all committed to delivering personalized advanced healthcare solutions. Thank you for your attention. At Mehravin, we're committed to driving innovation in personalized care. We look forward to partnering with you to push the boundaries of medical technology and improve healthcare together. Fantastic. We have a question from Tipli. Tipli, please go ahead. Uh, this is quite an interesting one looking at the healthcare scenario uh, right now. So I am just keen on understanding, like uh, considering the various obstacles involved in meeting the demands of scaling, specifically for common and more complex, uh, you know, orthopedic ca cases, how are you planning to address the uh, scalability? Dr. Thanks for the uh, question. If I understood it uh, well, I can say that in case of scalability, we would be uh, partner with uh, hospitals and clinics uh, worldwide. Also, we will work with uh, resellers and distribu distributors to uh, scale our market. In case of uh, technology and uh, complex uh, operations, 
uh, we have the technology and knowledge for doing uh, complex cases. Thank I you. hope I answer your question. Yeah, thank you. May I request Anne to, uh, Anne, please go ahead. Yes, thank you. Uh, I would like to know if the resin that you're using for the bone-like um, texture uh, is medically approved. Was uh, was it actually a, a approved um, for sur surgical grade and uh, implant? Uh, do you have all the clinical approvals for that? Uh, you know, uh, uh... In case of implants and uh, micro-architected structure, uh, we are uh, going to serve the solution to the surgeons and get their fit feedback. But uh, basically, uh, it's, uh, it's an acceptable knowledge and uh, we have similar works, uh, research papers and uh, Mm, patents that uh, they tested this uh, in vitro and in vivo and have uh, good feedbacks and it's acceptable in medical uh, market. Yeah. Thank you. Maybe one question, Aziz. How how are you planning to compete with your competition? Because already similar products are available in the market. So what is that one very very strong differentiating factors you have? Uh, first of all, we uh, provide uh, a holistic approach. Uh, we design and manufacture and do all process uh, together. The second uh, uh, advantage is that uh, uh, we have uh, some advantages in design. For example, in Zbone, we have uh, macro architected structures that I. Uh, have not uh, seen in other competitors. And in case of ZLab, also we have uh, advantages in designs. And uh, in addition, uh, we have a, a profound team. You know, we are so mot motivated and passionate about our mission. And uh, we always put a profound on excellence. So, uh, we think uh, it may be difficult to compete, it, but we are very hopeful. And uh, the other point that is uh, the other point is that uh, we are at the beginning of this technology, and we are growing all together. Thank you, thank you, Aziz. Uh, and if there are more questions, I would request to take them in the chat section. Uh, next one is Formula Square, which is decentralizing motorsport industry for advanced edutainment applications. Hi, everyone. We are Formula Square. My name is Edward, the co-founder and COO of Formula Square. Our founding team consists of experienced entrepreneurs with backgrounds in engineering and finance. We have been running technology-related businesses for over 10 years. So why did we come up with the idea of forming Formula Square? Because... As you all know, F1 is awesome, but it has many constraints. It's risky to drive, you need to block roads for racing events, and it's super expensive for both individuals and corporate sponsors. Traditional motorsports also face challenges in engaging the younger generation. Additionally, there is a significant demand for STEAM education in many cities, particularly for those eager to nurture the younger generation with knowledge of technology applications. That's why we created Formula Square. We aim to transform traditional motorsports and build a new generation of educational racing ecosystems that allow the general public to join us. We will position ourselves as a luxury yet affordable experience. As you can see, we have already developed our own version of racing. You can easily go racing through our system powered by 5G or Wi-Fi signals. You drive the car using our gaming chairs with gears 1 through 5, just like a real car, or even battle through your mobile phone at your fingertips. We are essentially bridging the gap between traditional motorsports and mobile gaming. Here are some of our track records for both indoor and outdoor pop-up events, including promotions for the World Rally last year, 5G promotions for Singtel in Singapore and Smartone in Hong Kong, and crossover events with Japanese animation like Cyber Formula and Eva Racing. Recently, we also conducted a STEAM Experience Day through our Formula Square Academy to support the STEAM education market. 
As you can see, the market cap of F1 is approximately $17 billion, which represents a significant opportunity for us. We are well positioned to capitalize on the growth momentum in our target market segments, including Steam Education, Gaming, and Web3. Our revenue streams will come from racing games, product sales, sponsorships, and more. Now, let me outline our go-to-market strategy for success. We have already established a solid foundation, and moving forward, we plan to build our distribution network either independently or through partnerships, joint ventures, or franchising. In the next two years, we will accelerate the development of our product portfolio, including racing cars and other branded products. Meanwhile, we'll continue to develop autonomous driving technology using our RV cars on our racing tracks. In the near future, you can expect to see AI racing battles on our platform. Also, we aim to connect with various KOL, celebrities, and professional racers to help us build a vibrant racing community. We will leverage our upcoming Web 2 and Web 3 infrastructure to allow the community to enjoy not only racing games, but also the sharing of cash benefits and rewards. To broaden our revenue streams and expedite market penetration, we will develop more virtual tools for both learning and gaming. To reduce costs associated with running pop-up events, we plan to adopt more portable racing tracks and gaming kits. Ultimately, we aim to extend our racing experiences to the sky and sea. That concludes our presentation for today. We welcome potential business partners to join us on this exciting journey. Thank you very much. So this was Formula Aspire. Uh, do we have questions for Edward? Maybe one question, Edward. Uh, who's your competition? Hi, uh, thank you for your question. Um, in the market, you can see that uh, in the past, uh, there's maybe lots of people, they would like to put a camera in, inside a vehicle to do the racing, even something like uh, DJI, they got the drones battle. But the difference between us and the others is that we are actually more like a smart city. We build it, it's not just the car and the control. We got a back end system, including the track and the people. With our motion, uh, with our motion chair, you can imagine we got some sensor into the car. So once we do something like drifting, and then we got all the data and the information came back to the driver. And also we can we now is using the AI to monitor the track. We can exactly know the car, the position, the time, and then we can calculate the difference between the different racer. So that'll be, it's like uh, we do it, we development a whole system for that. Is a question Thank you. from Kartik. Yeah, uh, exciting actually. <laughs> we just um, <clears throat> saw the F1 last week here. Yeah, so, so in Singapore, you did something last week um, uh, with this? I guess we did. Uh, um, I mean, that would be like a one, uh, two years ago. We do. We got a project with Singtel. And then uh, that would be the, you can see the finally the video inside that would be uh, located in Singtosa. With, with the 5G network, we can control the car, even in Hong Kong. That would be something uh, happened uh, during the pandemic in, the, in Singapore two years ago. Yeah, and now, was, uh, yeah, yeah, and uh, and also we got some more information for you. Like last year, November, we partnership with the FIA. That will be during the one event is RX Rally Hong Kong. So now we've been the some project with the FIA as well. So we try to follow up maybe to different event coming from the FIA, especially the Rally, the F one, whatever the big event, we can have a small campus there. Uh, the whole system is not serving the 12 professional or 12, 20 professional car racer. We are serving the audience. We want to give the audience from the participation to uh, instead of the exhibition. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Edward. Uh, uh, and, and you might be seeing Paul on your screen. Yes, Shadda, please go ahead. 
Uh, yeah, it's very innovative concept, uh, Edward. So what I wanted to understand, I think more from the perspective, because uh, you're making, you know, hook, people hook the screen and they're sitting and, and they're doing it. What about the uh, health aspects of, of uh, uh, you know, more from the perspective of the fatigue that gets from, you know, uh, countries looking at the screen or just being um, without motion for quite some time and the addiction part that happens. So, you know, more from, from that angle, is there some thought around that? Okay. And also we're coming up with, with got some uh we got some coming up project is focusing monitoring the driver you can see that for example um the platform now we open it from the age from 8 to 60 or 80 and then we try to collect all the data to helping them how to prove the driving skill not just for racing and also we can uh add some devices on the on the chair as well to monitor the whole situation of the driver and the racer so there will be something up. We're coming to pick up the data to to start with another analysis for that. There will come something coming up in the future. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Probably we may take more questions in the chat. Uh, but yeah, uh, thanks to all the jury members for uh, for listening to the to the presentations from uh, drinking uh, from from the fire hose. Uh, now I would request our jury members to probably talk about one or two startups that stood out from your perspective. And uh, uh, probably you can also provide your very quick feedback on, on, on these one or two startups that you felt were really interesting and exciting. And I, I know it's, it's, I hate to put somebody on spot, uh, but who can go first? <laughs> I see she- I'll go first, ready. yeah. 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 <laughs> Uh, thank you, all the founder startup pitches. Uh, I, I've been in previous sessions, but this one is going to be difficult, though it's bucketed as uh, Industry 5 Auto. Oh, my God. Uh, from uh, healthcare to uh, racing to uh, energy efficiency and furniture, uh, it's going to be difficult for me. But uh, I, so this is my personal opinion, not my company's uh, uh, view. So I, I think uh, my Couple of picks would be uh, the uh, critical infrastructure protection. I think inter Intellectra, uh, Intellectra, and then uh, the shoe personalization, Fitasy, uh, and then uh, uh, the healthcare one with the bone uh, and other stuff. So even though it's not in my industry, but I think these three uh, is just is what I could digest today. I mean. It's so much to fathom, so uh, that doesn't mean others are not making it. It's just that I need more time to assimilate and then uh, come back. So thank you, all the presenters. Thank, thanks. Thanks a lot, Shiva. Uh, really appreciate your feedback. And I'm sure that we will have more time in the next couple of weeks to go through these uh, presentations, do a deep dive, and really understand what we can do collectively. Yeah. So thanks a lot, Shiva, for that. May I request Anne to go next, please? Yes, uh, I I really appreciated the formula square uh, solution as it is something we heavily rel uh, relate to uh, right. in my industry where it would be a very nice complement uh, uh, to a marketing campaign or a good way actually to shift uh, to shift sponsorship or sponsoring from very very costly uh, sport event to uh, to 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 something that would be probably more. Um, democratize so definitely that one I see the potential sadly I I we, we don't have the the fun right now to do that but that's definitely something to look into otherwise um the construction let me look uh, AC3D. Really, yeah AC3D uh it is definitely something that uh there are there are a few solutions onto the market, but I think there are still still a lot of of space available. Uh, the fact that the the solution does not need uh, the the final product uh, could be used as a final final product that do not would not require more layers. That is yet to be proven, but that's also quite uh, very uh, very interesting. And uh, last but not least, I was looking for the name of the shoe solution. Uh, yeah, Fidesi, Fidesi. I'm quite sure this is definitely something that has a lot of future. Um, yes, there, there are already, I mean, solution in that field, especially for the dental. 
uh, it would be more or less covering in other aspects of the of, of the body and of the need. So yeah, that would be a, maybe have a closer look at the go to market for that one. But yeah. Thank you. Thanks a lot, Anne, and uh, appreciate your uh, transparent feedback. I, I, I love the fact that you find Formula Square probably a better partner for promotions in the future than costly F1 events. <laughs> that's, a, that's an interesting one. Thanks a lot for that. May I request Anjali to go next? Yeah, sure. Thank you so much. First of all, thank you, everyone, all the founders. Congratulations. And it was interesting one and a half hour, uh, quite exciting. And uh, I'm sure lots of hard work by each one of you. So a couple of names, I'll go with Seva, as he mentioned, you know, we'll just take two, three names, but we would need further time, you know, go through more content and uh, then only say, but just you know, when you meet someone and you guys, I'm sure meeting more people than us in this part of the world, but when you meet and something, uh, someone share exciting, so one or two name, I'll just randomly pick, but not in a particular order. So no offense, please. But I think Equa Firm is something uh, which uh, I found interesting because, you know, they are trying to address something very, very basic fundamental need in the society and uh, which is water. So uh, I think uh, uh, that is the one. And smart is... Uh, uh, something which is, you know, IoT driven, uh, trying to manage uh, grids, utility operations, energy efficiency uh, on that aspect. Uh, up form 3D, which is again AI driven uh, uh, solution for not only production, inventory management, and things like that. So quite interesting, but uh, I'm sure. They, they, they will be existing solutions. So we need to uh, do some more work or thinking or learning on that one. Uh, formula scare. I don't know. It's because we just finished F1. So that's the effect, but uh, road closure, closure and all that. So we, we, we felt the pain as well as the, the spending, which Singapore is doing all the, the tourist tourists are doing or, so I think it's quite interesting. So, uh, but again, uh, going with Shraddha, the health aspects, but again, uh, gaming is something or smoking is something they just have to give a warning, right? It's injurious. So we play on your own risk. So I think, but interesting one. Yeah. So, so yeah, with probably form less choir, you can have similar excitement, but uh, <laughs> less of pain. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, Karthik, may I request you to go ahead, please? Yeah, sure. Thanks a lot. I think in general, I agree with all the juries. <clears throat> in general, all the solutions have uh, really come out really well. Uh, I think pretty much all of them are Gen AI based, and I see some of them are deep LLM as well. Uh, I think technically very, very solid. Um, and I think from my experience and probably connecting all the dots, uh, I do come out, you know, come out with uh, something of that, you know, that sticks to me. Uh, to me, the top three, I mean, to me, is then smart, um, then uh, uh, formula square, my why, my why, right? Yeah. So the three of them, but uh, uh, not to mention everybody actually have uh, uh, you know solid uh, solutions, right? And I think it, it, it it's really uh, good to see uh, such solutions that come out of the market. I think scale scaling is going to be really really important for all the startups. I wish all of them uh, the very best. Thank you. Thanks a lot, Karthik. Vineet, may I request you to go next, please? Yeah. Yeah, thanks for all the founders presenting, I guess. It was a varied kind of, um, uh, um, I would say, from uh, uh, people talking about from IoT to all the way going to Formula One kind of a thing. Um, just from being from a domain where we operate, um, so I'm just speaking in that area, not, not to say that the others are uh, definitely when we do a little more deep dive, you'll understand more about it. But just to call out, NSmart looked good for me. Um, second was the MyWay AI. And um, yeah, just to call out from the last one, uh, Formula Square, it looked very interesting and promising. Thank you. Thanks a lot, Neet. Shraddha, please. Yes, uh, I think all of the uh, presentations were uh, wonderful. A lot of innovative ideas around here, and and you know get to learn a lot as well when we when we get to see these different ideas coming around and how a lot of ideas can mix and match, and you know some new thing gets created. So it's it's quite wonderful experience for me. 
I I think everybody is good. I don't I don't think uh, you know there is there is anything uh, from the perspective of picking, but because we have to like you know something that is coming on top of my mind to kind of pick, uh, you know, uh, two to three uh, pitch today. I would say one is uh, the three D printing AC three D because. Uh, I think 3D printing is as a technology is is also quite something that's revolutionary. Um, the Aquafirm because uh, I think they're doing great work because it's something that's required from the perspective of you know that that touches each and every life you know so from that perspective I would say that and the third one is Q plus. Uh, looking at sustainability perspective, I think you know this we need more and more sustainability. Uh, ventures coming in so yeah that that would, that would be my pick i would wish all the best to each and every um you know person here on the call thank you thanks a lot shadha Tatli, please uh hi so that was quite an intriguing session it's like uh so it's like picking our favorite star from the galaxy it was it's very difficult all of them were amazing with uh, solutions but then, however, uh, today, uh, I mean, uh, for my pers from my perspective, it would be Intellectra because it's high time. I think the automotive industry, you know, must now consider cybersecurity as an integral part. And uh, the second would be uh, Aquafirm, uh, which is, again, addressing a very pressing issue, that is water contamination. And uh, I would also go for uh, Meravin. So that is also uh, a very uh, in, important, significant issue. So yeah, thank you. Thanks a lot, Good night, everyone. Uh, is Walter there? Yeah, he's there. Yes, I am. Yes. yes. Um, one for the present. Very interesting to see. So yeah, I'm fine. Those my I'm kind of uh, several business angels uh, at work. So uh, obviously, uh. Focusing on the uh, options, um, the for me the, the ones most interesting and the one who would stand out was a uh, 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 the uh, int uh, uh, Intellectra, uh, My Way, and uh, and N Smart. Um, I think their key is for each of those that uh, partnering with the uh, leading industry players, which is uh, particularly for Intellectra. I think. Uh, very important, uh, and also to have a solution which is uh, scalable without, uh, um, let's say, uh, a lot of cost. Okay, thank you, thank you, Walter. If you could not uh, hear Walter because of the network uh, issue, I think he mentioned Intellectra and Smart and My Way. Please correct me if I'm wrong, but that's what I captured. <laughs> yeah. Okay, Allah, please. Well, what I would like to say is it was really a pleasure. I enjoyed uh, the whole uh, companies or startups with the ideas. I enjoyed the jurors that they already shared with us their insights. I already uh, received, of course, the, the sheet and our start ranking. Um, I'm looking forward to have all of these ideas up and running in the market with a very booming uh, across the different countries. They are really amazing. In. Jury members, thanks a lot for your feedback, for your support today. Uh, I'm sure startups are even more excited, even more knowledgeable uh, about their businesses today after hearing your feedback. Uh, I'm sure we'll be able to improve overall product strategies, overall road market strategies, and, and, and come back with a better messaging and value proposition uh, whenever you meet with them uh, in the next couple of weeks or months and so on and so forth. Uh, as a very, very, uh, you know, strong uh, support that we receive from the startups because, again, this is very impossible to put all the information, solution, value proposition, everything within four minutes long video pitch. It's not easy. And startups did that after weeks and weeks of work, which is fantastic. So thanks. Thanks, everybody. Uh, I think you and your effort, your supports, uh, support is making uh, us, us stronger. Uh, thanks all the audience member for joining and we will reconnect soon. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Take care. Bye. Cognitively enriching. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, thank everyone. You. Thank you. Thank, yeah, thanks bye -bye. for your time. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Take care, everybody. Yeah.